Hi, thank you for joining. Last time in the study of Tanya chapter 26, we were speaking about the contrast of two emotions and how there is a benefit to a certain type of sadness at the right time. So you have all different variations uh, of an emotion, which may, we call it in English, sadness, but in uh, Hebrew, that word has uh, different forms. So you have a, an atzvut, which is more a heavy uh, depression-like uh, numbing sadness. And then you have a meridus, which is from the word mar, bitterness. And so they're, they're all kind of cousins to each other. You have a melancholy, uh, which is like a sadness that has a tinge of uh, sweetness to it, nostalgia, so it uh, also can be beneficial in the right context. But context is key, and that's really the message from last time, and probably one of the most fundamental, important messages that relates to all types of morality and religion and politics and character improvement is that for the most part, no emotion is inherently good or bad. It all depends on how it's used and, and when it's used. So you have this type of sadness, which he was referring to as a broken heart and a bitterness. That's an uncomfortable feeling. It's not a feeling that we target and say, oh, wow, this is a very spiritual emotion and I, I, I hope to be broken all the time. I mean, it's something that we try to stay away from. But when it's channeled in the right setting, it can actually lead to a higher happiness. So, for example, you have a bitterness that can come from being wronged by somebody. So you're walking around and you feel this resentment to the way the hand that life has dealt you or it's something that somebody did and you are what they may say like salty and just uh, have that fire inside you. So that fire is distinct from another type of sadness of uh, atzvus, which is depression, which has no life to it and, and you feel bad about yourself and you don't have a lot of energy. This type of sadness, you have a chip on your shoulder and you have something that uh, is spurring you to improve in some way. Even if it's uh, pointed in the wrong direction sometimes, there can still be a benefit in the sense that it gets you going and uh, you just have to keep that under control. So what we're talking about here is you have this bitterness and it's applied inward. Looking back, you see I am not happy with certain decisions that I made. In the arena of sports, we said that when somebody doesn't perform well, they feel bad and they let it sting. And that kind of becomes motivation to, it prompts them to perform better. So it's turning that fire from the pain of a loss into a gain. And here we're applying that in a spiritual context in the sense that a person has this negative emotion inside of them. It doesn't matter if it's conscious or unconscious. There's a discomfort there. And that has to come out of the system somehow. How do you get that out of your system? By arranging set times to reflect, to deeply feel that emotion, to uh, understand that this is separating and then you remove it from your system and that makes room for the joy that is going to come afterwards. That's a brokenness and a bitterness that is aimed in the right direction and channeled. But like we said before, context is important. So that same emotion 
if it's applied in a different direction or at the wrong time, can end up causing you to be angry with somebody and taking away from joy, not making room for joy. So the key is to know what I should be feeling, when I should be feeling, and not manufacturing that emotion in a false way, but it's almost like a deep meditation of this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now, and you learn how to uh, experience that. And this is the reason why he says that the famous Kabbalist Arizal, before he studied, he would have a set period of time. There's a, there's a certain prayer that uh, we don't really do it now called Tikkun Chatzos, but great scholars used to have a lot of discipline, wake up in the middle of the night, and they would say this prayer which mourns the destruction of the temple, and it, it, it's a lot of sad psalms and then he would begin studying. But before he would study, he had to get go from this deep sadness into this happiness, and he would say the psalm that we referred to in the last, uh, in the last video. There was a psalm which has two contrasting verses. One is the experience of this broken heart, and the other is this elevated state, and they're interdependent. So he would say the psalm as a bridge to feel the joy because we um, discussed the real spiritual uh, target, the feeling, the way of being, is to have this lightness and quickness and energy that you're just absolutely free and open to absorb. You don't feel the self. It's not a heaviness or a self-consciousness. That's the ideal state, that you want to have this nimble uh, atmosphere around you where you feel like you can move and speak to people and absorb and listen and that's the ideal state to make room for wisdom because you have all the attention uh, and the brain power and the heart is open you have all the attention out there rather than uh, focused inward and or pointed in many different directions. The mind's not uh, being pulled in different directions. So that's the idea of joy and lightness. And uh, before he studied, he would need to be in that state to get there. And so before that, he would have the sadness. The sadness would make room for the joy. And that type of sadness, he says here, is a sadness, sheyesh besimchazu yisroin, it's a sadness that has the advantage of light that comes from the darkness. Now that verse of light coming from the darkness is really uh, a concept in itself. The idea is sometimes, and people misinterpret this, they say that had I not experienced the low point, I would never have been able to really enjoy the good times. But that's the idea of contrast. It's like, because you have the negative, therefore you can appreciate the positive. Here, it's talking about a light that comes directly from the darkness, which means inside the darkness is light waiting to happen. And when you come along and you kind of break and expose that darkness, you uncover the light that's waiting inside. In the idea of emotion here, you have a bitterness that technically it's, n it's a dark state. It's not holy, it's not a positive emotion, especially if it's applied towards other people. But what you do is you experience that in the right setting like instead of being bitter about how you were wronged, instead of feeling bad about an investment, uh, financial loss, you feel bad about how you acted as a parent, how you managed your time, how you spoke to somebody. Your brokenness is directed at self-improvement. So you take that same emotion, when you can apply it in the context, you have a lot of energy inside that emotion, you cleanse yourself and you extract the light inside that dark energy and you change that darkness into light, which is a whole spiritual idea in itself that we find in many places. But that's in the context now 
of sadness and happiness, that the happiness that you feel is a light that comes from the darkness of the sadness directly, not in contrast to, but from the sadness. Had you never experienced that type of sadness, if you didn't allow yourself to go through that cathartic experience and that self-analysis, you would never, number one, get rid of that feeling that's beneath the surface, and you would never reach the higher feeling of happiness. So we'll continue next time to explain a little bit more about the advantage of the light that comes from darkness.